In this video we're going to look at an alternative way of setting up a base map and we're also going to make a start down the route of customising maps to give you more control over the colours and the shapes and the way that they appear. For this example we're going to be looking at Vice County 11, South Hampshire. The map on the screen here is the standard base map that you get for Vice County 11 by going through the normal route File New Map Base Map Wizard. This is a perfectly good base map of course and it shows all the county boundaries but you might like to do things like being able to shade in the different counties to make it clearer which is the one you're actually dealing with and of course we're on the coast here so there's areas of sea that are not very obvious unless you happen to know the area already. So we're going to try creating a base map in a slightly different way and see if we can address some of those issues. So to do this we go to File, New Map and choose the Base Map Wizard again. And as usual, we want to tell it which county we're going to be working with. But this time, when we go down to look at all the options for our base map, we're going to leave all the grids as they are. But if we scroll up to the top of this list, we don't want it to show the coastline or any of the county boundaries at the moment. If we leave the name as it is, as MapMate suggests, then what will happen is that this map will overwrite the previous map we had for Vice County 11, and I don't want to do that, I want to keep this as a separate map, so I need to change the name slightly, and I'm going to call it Vice County 11 Base Map Shaded, because we're going to be adding some colours to it. OK, that, and it goes away and creates the map. At the moment, this is just an empty grid. It is still a map, and as you move your cursor across it, you can still see the grid reference numbers and the county names appearing in the bottom left of the screen. But, of course, it's not showing the county boundaries. So, to add those in, we need to start editing this map. Before we do the editing, it's worth getting familiar with how MapMate deals with the various parts that go to make up a map. In MapMate terminology, each individual thing that appears on the map is known as a feature. So in this rather empty map that we're looking at, we do in fact have several features. We've got the grid lines, we have slightly darker grid lines for the 100 km squares and grey ones for the 10 km squares. We have the grid reference numbers and letters around the edge of the map. So there are a few features there and we can see those features using the drop down arrow that you have used before to get from one species to another in the atlas maps. But in this map, which is a base map of course, when you click on this drop down arrow, what you get is a list of all the features that have gone to make up the map. So as we said, there are grids, there are all the numbers around the outside, and there's a border to the map, various things here. And there's various columns here. The first column is just showing you that all these things are actually displaying on the map. And you can see how this works if you untick the 100 km grid and untick the 10 km grid, the grid lines have vanished off the map. But as soon as you tick them back on again, they reappear. The next column is just telling you what the feature is actually called. The next column tells you what type of thing it is, whether it's a grid line or just an annotation onto the map in this case. How that's actually visualised by the mapping software. And the next few columns are to do with the size and colour of the various features on the map. And finally we have an order column. The order column shows you how the features sit on top of each other on the map. If you imagine the map as consisting of lots of layers all sitting on top of each other, the higher the number, the nearer the top of that pile of layers the particular feature actually is. Don't worry if that all seems a lot to take in. We'll learn about these various aspects one by one as we go through and start editing things. So that's our feature list. We'll close it up again for the moment. And the next thing is to actually add in our county boundaries. And to do that we need to go to the Edit menu and Insert. Um, when you hover over Insert you get a whole list of different types of things that can be inserted into maps. We'll see how to use some of these in further videos in this series, but the one we want to look at at the moment is simply called More Map Features. When we click on that, another box opens up with a whole list of things that you might wish to consider adding into your map. At the moment, all I want to do is to add in my Vice County boundary to the map. So if I scroll down through this list and find Vice County Polygons, and I can tick that box, 
and click on insert, click on OK, and it goes and adds the uh, polygons in, and it leaves this additional map features box open, which I no longer need at the moment, so I just cancel that to come out of it. We can immediately see that we do now have some county boundaries showing, and here is the Isle of Wight also showing up on this particular map. But this is not in an ideal state yet. For one thing, all the counties are sat on top of everything else on the map, so the numbers and grid lines are hidden behind them. And for another thing, I want to be able to highlight Vice County 11 and make that look different to the other counties that are showing on here. So to do all that, we need to go back into the feature list, which is now rather longer than it was before as a result of us putting all these um, counties into the map. It's not very obvious from the feature list which bits actually are the county, but in fact they're the ones that have got a number, the vice county number, plus they say that they are polygons. So the first two numbers here, number one, is actually the text annotation. In other words, that's the number one that forms the labels for the grid squares around the edge of the map. This number 10, however, is a polygon, and it's one of the ones that goes to make up the Vice County 10, which is actually the Isle of Wight in this particular example. So it would be nice to send all those polygons to the back so that the grid lines sit on top of them. And it would be possible to do that one by one by finding the polygon that you want, finding the order column, and right clicking and choosing send to back. And that would work, but it would obviously take some time to go through each individual polygon. So there is a way of um, selecting all of those in one go. If you scroll down this list, you'll see that all the polygons that you've just added to the map have come in at order 7. In other words, they're sitting on top of everything else. Uh, what we can do is right-click over one of these order 7 polygons and tell it to select this order. You should now see that there are these purpley blue bands that have gone across everything that is at order 7. In other words, all those county polygons have been selected in one go. Go back to the order column, hover over one of these counties that is at order 7, right click again, and instead of doing send to back, you have to do group to back, and that will send all the polygons to the back of the map all in one go. I'll close up the feature list again and we can see that the grid lines and numbers are now over the top of the counties which have been sent to the back. But I still want to make Vice County 11 show up a bit more clearly. I no longer want to have all the counties selected, um, so let's clear that selection by going right click, clear selection. We haven't got anything selected at the moment. We now need to scroll down a bit and find the polygons for Vice County 11. So we have a whole set of polygons here for Vice County 11. Quite a few of those will no doubt be islands around the edge of the coast, whereas the main county block will be one big polygon. But we need to select all of those if we want to change the shading for Vice County 11. And the simplest way to do this is to do it manually by clicking somewhere on each line so that they all get highlighted in that blue or purple colour. You need to make sure you've got all of your Vice County 11s selected. And now we can go to the Colour column and right click. And we want to do Fill Colour, but we don't want to do just one of them. We want to do the whole lot that we've just selected. So we go to Group Fill Colour. And from here we can choose whichever colour we wish. For instance, you could make your county bright red. And that does make the county look very different to the one surrounding it, but is perhaps um, a rather garish colour. So let's try something else. Right click over the colour again, go to Group Fill Colour, and I'm going to set this to white. So my area for Vice County 11 does now stand out nicely from the other Vice Counties around it. What it doesn't look different to now, though, is the sea, which is also white on this particular map. But there's something else we could do to put that right, and that involves adding something else into the map. So we go back to the Edit menu, Insert back into More Map Features, scroll down towards the bottom of this list, and there is a C Background Fill, which we can tick and insert. OK. Cancel to get out of that box. Our map has now gone completely blue. The C is on top of everything else. So just as we did before, we go into the Feature List, 
let's clear the selection that we left there from last time and we need to find the C in amongst all our features so scroll through the list and there it is it's just called C you can highlight that one it's got the blue color showing but what it's also showing is that it's currently at order 8 on top of everything else in the map and we want the C to be behind everything else in the map there's only one polygon to worry about this time so we can just right click and send to back and if we now go back to our map the blue C color is behind everything else and the counties are filled in on top of that so that's looking pretty much the way I want um, the only thing that I might also do to this map is where we have the letters for the 100 km squares, the STs and the SUs. They're not showing up very well because they're actually grey on a pale grey background. So we'll do one final bit of editing to this map. Back into the feature list, uh, we need to find the 100 km letter references. There's four of them here. And we go to the colour column, right click and change the group line colour to black. It looks like we ought to change the fill colour as well, but in fact for the lettering it's just the line colour that you need to do to make it stand out in that way. And I now have my base map shaded. So I now have a base map with various colours shaded onto it and looking the way I want. I don't need to do anything extra to save the map. All the changes that you make as you go along get saved automatically. So the map is now created and saved and ready to use to put atlas dots or other things over the top of it, which we'll see how to do in the next video.